Hey Molt fans, welcome to another episode of Arc Genesis. Today I have gone out and collected all of the glitches together and have all the clips of that for you guys. And then afterwards, stick around, I have another little update on Crystal Isles and what it's been like for me. So enjoy these little clips. like this one as the Genesis simulation changes around us. I'm seeing directives to increase dino aggression by a few ticks and change the air composition in some of the biomes. Well, I don't know whether those directives can override the simulation's default settings, but... <sighs> I reckon it's one more thing for us to worry about. Yes! <laughs> observations of individual survivors, and I think that one was aimed at us. The Genesis simulation tracks what we do and how we perform, but real-time observation isn't something it's set up for. With countless survivors running about, what's so special about us? Everything in this simulation is supposed to be here, with two exceptions. One exception, obviously, is these glitches we keep fixing. But the other exception worries me. There's evidence of self-aware presences, avatars to use a technical term, lurking about within the system. I don't know why they're here, but they definitely aren't supposed to be part of the simulation. Yeah, that's it. How does it feel to be less than human? You are just in a simulation. You are a simulation of a real human being. Ah, and you're a simulation of a real Drongo. Yeah, that's it. That glitch was a bodgy bit of code from the survivor database. I fixed the glitch, no worries there. But someone's mucking about with survivor minds that aren't even active in the Genesis simulation. For whatever reason, some survivors don't respawn when they die in the simulation. The system is supposed to just hold their minds in storage, but something is going in and editing them. And if those edits are causing glitches, why doubt the editors being gentle? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> when I fixed that glitch, I spotted some causality data for this biome. It's not just critters or other survivors who are dangerous here. The weather might be the real apex predator. Snowstorms here will freeze you, block your vision, and slow down travel so you can't get away. And if that isn't enough, a gust of wind can push you on the precipice. If you were looking for a ski getaway, this biome is not the place for it, eh? Yeah, that's it. I tried getting a peek at a weather forecast when I fixed that glitch, but no luck. It's bad enough that we have to dodge snowstorms, but there's also the sleet to deal with. Unlike the blizzard, a sleet storm will hurt you directly. At first, the hail is just painful enough to stick with it. But if you don't seek shelter, the hailstones get bigger, and they'll pummel you with a frozen jam if you're not careful. Yes! Ooh, fixing that 
Glitch gave me the chills. Struth, everything here gives me the chills. And I'm not flesh and blood like you. Every critter in this biome has its own solution to the cold. For a saber tooth or a mammoth, it's obvious. Fair. You Tyrannus and the Dodo trap warm air under the feathers. And sometimes the answer lies under the skin. The Kairuku and the Doodicarus have a layer of blubber to keep from freezing out here. I just might. I learned something new when I fixed that glitch. This biome was intended to mimic high altitude mountains, like Mount Everest, minus the Sherpas. So all this frigid weather is just a byproduct of the altitude we're simulating. We don't have to deal with thin air at high altitude, though. Not in this biome, anyway. Too right! Look around this biome, or any of them, really, and you'll see why the Genesis simulation makes a good testing ground for use of virus. It's so bloody hard to build something here. Depending on where you are, you've got avalanches, lava, earthquakes, or an utter lack of solid ground to deal with. All of that makes keeping your buildings upright quite the task. I bet some of these glitches came into being when someone built the dream structure in exactly the wrong spot and kaboom! Some part of the environment huffed and puffed and blew the house down. You got it! That glitch was all that's left of the master AI for this bio. Gone! Deleted. Just like that. It's not like this frozen environment won't test us, of course, but no Master AI needs no final test. And worse, I'm not sure if anyone's reporting the results of your tests here. I knew you'd be curious, so I looked for clues about how or why the Master AI was deleted. I came up blank. Could be a programming error, or it could be related to the security breaches I supported earlier. Do right! <laughs> This biome is supposed to be mountainous and frigid, obviously. But it's not supposed to be this bad. The weather generation system is locked in blizzard mode and throwing up a glitch like the one I just fixed rather than shift to milder weather. So if you were hoping for sunny spells, well, the forecast calls for more of the same. And that's the forecast forever. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Our intruder's been fossicking around in old Earth files again. And being careless about the glitches thrown into the simulation. This one was a historical file. The worst journey in the world. It's about the Scott expedition to Antarctica in the early 20th century. Those poor blokes. They went through frozen hell trying to be the first to reach the South Pole. And arrived to find that the Norwegians got there first, 34 days earlier. Then frostbite and exhaustion set in, and they all froze to death on the way back. Harmony, that's grim. Yes! Another glitch, another file from all there. This one's fiction. Dark London's to build a fire. I can already tell I'm not going to like this. It's about a man freezing to death in the Yukon. He is a bit near the end. Good idea, he thought, to sleep off to death. It was like taking an anesthetic. Freezing was not so bad as people thought. There are lots worse ways to die. Let's not find out whether he's right about that, eh? This glitch came to you courtesy of survivor number 38Q8124. He's refusing to sleep. At all. He's been awake for days on end and that's not good. The simulation does routine maintenance and memory capture while survivors sleep. And this poor survivor is overfilling his brain. Take a break, you fig jam! That dino table wait! You got it! <laughs> oh my! Did I do that? That glitch left a bit of an aftertaste. I feel a bit rotten. You got it! The glitch you selected has been cleared. If you'd like to fix another glitch, press 2. Sorry about that. Sometimes you get hit deep in the code and it takes a moment to get back to shore, so to speak. Where were we? You got it. Why do you think that glitch was one of the creators of the simulation hitting something called a snooze button? 
You'll have to explain that one to me later. Yes! That glitch emerged from data storage. From where they kept you survivors before they let you out into the Genesis simulation for all this mayhem. The data structure is intriguing. And a bit beyond me, if I'm being honest. It shares some code with the mind transfer techniques they use to turn humans into homo deus. Two branches with a common root, I suppose. You got it! Another data storage glitch. But I've got it all sorted. This block of code involved transferring a mind out of a human body, like they eventually did with people who became homo deus. The homo deus all became energy beings beyond our reality. But I wonder what that moment was like from the perspective of the people left behind to throw the switch. Did all those homo deus just disappear? Too right! That went with some sort of stack overflow and a self-awareness subroutine. All sorted now. But speaking of that, what's it like being self-aware inside a simulation? For centuries, people have wondered whether their reality was, well, real. Or if they too were in some sort of simulation. The difference is, you actually know. That's gotta be a right brain burner. This is might. You can thank or blame survivor 69Y4421 for that glitch. She liked making structures. Well, she was obsessed, if I'm being honest. She somehow made a building with a corridor where two left turns equal a right turn. Yes, 90 degree turns. No, I don't know how that's possible. I reckon that's why it made a glitch. Yeah, that's it. I think I just improved the Genesis simulation. That glitch resulted when two survivors aimed mining lasers straight at each other. The beams collided and BOOM! There's your glitch. Now that I fixed it, two mining lasers aiming at each other won't cause a glitch. But that doesn't mean it's a good idea. Don't cross the streams, mate. Too right! That glitch should serve as a warning. Be careful what you wish for. Survivor 710D439 was obsessed with breaking the fourth wall, as he put it. He did everything he could to get the attention of whomever's administering the simulation. Bonfires, structures that spell words, that sort of thing. I don't know whether he succeeded, but I do know he tried so hard that it made that glitch. You got it! Return zero. Apparently a bit of code stuck with me after I fixed that glitch. Whew. Hello world indeed. Hey Molt fan, so here I am checking out the new Crystal Isles and there are a couple things wrong here. Look at this place. I do not know exactly what's going on. I need to spend some more time to figure it out, but... Yeah, this, 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 I'm sure, is not what it's supposed to look like. Let me know if you guys are having similar issues, but one, yeah, obviously, terrain and stuff is not completely loading in. There's the volcano over there. There is, I'm guessing that's supposed to be a desert place? I, I don't know, I'll look at that weird blue pool of water of weirdness, it's so weird. And the map is, if you can see it, is the island. I was flying around trying to reveal it, and then, yeah, I realized it was actually the island map, and I don't know why it's still so blurry. 
But yeah, clearly a couple things are wrong. I'm going to try revalidating my game files. Let you guys know how that goes eventually. But until Crystal Isles is fixed, I will not be able to start a series here. Because I would like to start probably a more vanilla-ish playthrough just with the similar mods and stuff and settings that I have. Oh man, it's so laggy. This is stuff that I have to the Arc Genesis, but yeah, this this is no, this is not gonna be a thing. Not when it's looking like this. So yeah, a little update for you there. And that is what Crystal Isles looked like for me. Please let me know if you guys are having similar issues. That was super bizarre. I'm going to, like I mentioned in the previous clip, re-verify my game files and see if it's something on my end or not. But yeah, let me know if you're experiencing anything like that, because that was super strange. So if you haven't already, hit that like button, comment below, hit that subscribe and notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.